Hello and welcome to the part 2 of uh, Muzzle Flashes. So as you can see here we're gonna try to recreate uh, this. Obviously it's not gonna be probably the, exactly the same but at least we're gonna try to uh, get this sort of texture as close as possible. So as you can see it's got um, a little bit more detail and uh, a lot more directionality in that texture and I think because of the, the details uh, I think it could be used for semi-realistic projects and it's just, it just looks slightly different than what we had in the previous part. So hopefully you're going to enjoy this one and uh, yeah, at the end of the video I'm also going to go into the engine and uh, try to plug in into my particle systems uh, the material with that texture that we're going to create just to you know, show you how it might look uh, as an effect. Okay, I'm gonna start with an empty graph, so I'm gonna start with shape node, I wanna scale this on the X axis, I'm gonna use a trapezoid next, trapezoid transform grayscale, I'm gonna scale it at the top and I obviously want to disable the tiling because I don't need it for that node. And the next thing, uh, I'll use transform because I just want to rotate this. And I'm going to scale it down as well. And maybe move this here. What I'm missing right now is the end. So basically I want the, uh, the other part is to taper the other way. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy those two. Paste it actually all three like this I'm gonna rotate that one to see what I'm doing actually I'm gonna blend them together I'm gonna use add a blending node and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna move this one here and just scale it so I could get this kind of shape and I'm just going to go back to the trapezoid node and create that shape. And as you can see here, I've got a little break between those shapes, so I'm just going to move it a little bit closer to get rid of that gap. Okay, cool. The next thing I'm going to use is the splatter circular. I'm going to plug it into the pattern input one, change the pattern to use image input and I end up with this. So first thing I want to do, I just want to rotate it. So it's actually facing the uh, correct direction because I want those um, spikes to go outwards. So let me look for the rotation, which is here, 90, okay. And now I'm just going to change the radius and scale and create some randomization as well. I'm going to increase the pattern um, amount to maybe something like 30. I'm just gonna go down now and try to get like a uh, a good shape and uh, some random on it as well. So I still think I need more uh, patterns. So I'm just gonna increase it to maybe 64. And I'm just gonna leave it as it is right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. The next thing I want to do, actually, I want to use a transform node because I want to scale this down a little bit. So how I'm scaling this down, I'm pressing and holding Alt with Shift, selecting one of the corners and scale it down. I'm going to disable tiling node, tiling mode. I'm going to set it to no tiling actually. Okay, and next I'm going to use slope uh, blur. 
grayscale. And I'm gonna use a shape for the slope. And the other will be this soft circle. And I'm just gonna have a couple of samples. So as you can see, uh, I've got gray. I'm not sure if you can see, I can actually zoom in. in. So as you can see here, we have got like a gray uh, spikes and then it goes into the white one. Right, so now I need to isolate that kind of cone that I can control because I mean having control will be extremely useful because then I can just, you know, um, decide how much of this cone I actually need. So we're going to build this now. So I'm going to use a blend node because obviously we need to use a, a mask for it. So I'm going to use a shape. And I'm going to scale it on the X axis. And now I'm just going to use two polar grayscale node. I'm going to use blur as well, just to soften the edges and plug this in here. Uh, you might want to disable tiling to get rid of that bit. Now if you can use multiply. As you can see here, now we got this cone. Obviously you can go to blur and if you want very sharp transition, you can use the intensify on, the, on that blur node. Okay, so plenty of options for you to play with. Uh, maybe you'll find something that you, you know works a lot better or it's just better in general for you. Okay, so the next thing we could do we could use transform and move this a little bit. We could also bring uh, this as a main part and blend this with our current shape. Uh, let me run it through transform first. I'll scale this one essentially to this. Although I'm kind of missing those nice gray shapes, so it might be a good idea to grab slope blur and that shape, copy, paste, and run this through slope blur first. But before that, we probably want to run it through transform because we need to scale it down. So I'm going to double click on the slope blur, click once on the transform, and just scale it a little bit down and then through this transform. And now you can manipulate this. So basically you got like a main burst and those are uh, the supporting bursts. Okay. So I'm not sure if I'm going to use it. I'm just going to park it in here and I'm going to continue with our um, main shape that I've got here. So I'm just going to use another transform and just try to center it. I'm going to use next um, slope blur with this soft circle shape again because I actually want like a nice uh, blur on it. Okay, and uh, the next thing is I'm actually going to use warp, so um, warp and I just need a slight warp uh, with the, that follows the direction of it. So I think the best option would be to use uh, that texture. I'm going to rotate it and decrease the amount maybe to uh, something like 92. Um, I need to blur it a little bit. And I'm going to use this uh, polar grayscale, so I get this basically. And I'm going to use transform because I actually want to move it because uh, as you can see it kind of goes from the center outwards, but our um, shape is actually not on the center. So I kind of want to move it 
around here and then stretch it so it will follow the direction of our uh, texture so I'm going to show you in a minute I'm going to double click on warp obviously that's way too much I just want just a little bit you can see it kind of nicely warps our shapes and we're kind of getting like a very nice randomization so I'm just going to double click on the warp click once on the transformation node and I'm just going to move this somewhere around maybe here but now we got this uh, tiling issue here so if I'm going to double click you can see but what I'm going to do I'm just going to stretch it and then move it back here I need to move a little bit more maybe something like uh, this I'm gonna increase the intensity to see what this actually gives us I don't want it too much it's just a little bit okay the only bit I really don't like now it's this bit so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna uh, come up with another system that's gonna uh, subtract from from this area so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna use a shape trapezoid I'm gonna stretch it at the top and I need to disable tiling as well we'll get this we can stretch the bottom bit as well to maybe here so we got like this very spiky shape probably even more something like this next will be splatter circular I'm gonna plug it into the pattern input and change the pattern to read actually image input I'm gonna increase the pattern amount maybe let's start with 64 and down with the radius Y size needs to be much larger now I need to play with the, with the radius a bit more so I can close the circle and now I'm just gonna randomize it a lot so I could get essentially something like uh, this a spiral spread I'd like to see a bit more randomization between those here so let me maybe try to find an option okay so spread maybe to something like 1.5 scale random as well okay right so let's see if that works what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna blend it and I need to run this probably through the transform node so I can offset it I'll put it back here and set this to subtract so obviously that's not what we want but what we can do now we can just move this here and let's disable the tiling on it I probably want to run it through blur because those shapes are actually um, very harsh so I'm just gonna you know play with the intensity because I just want a little bit of blur so you got like a soft transition of this uh, subtraction okay okay so I think this could work so let's maybe um, let's maybe colorize it and see what kind of uh, visuals we might get so I'm gonna use gradient map and here I'm just gonna use orange and here will be full red and we essentially get this which I personally think looks pretty cool and now the thing is you can you might want to run it through for example transform node and uh, do this use trapezoid again uh, this time the color one and then transform again so you can actually bring it into the into the this position maybe center it as well and the last part will be a glow 
and the glow obviously you can play with the settings you can get like a really cool looking glow uh, on your texture I'm gonna colorize the glow as well to maybe something a bit more orangey and yeah and I think that's it you can also go back to that trapezoid and now you can manipulate it by changing those uh, for the bottom you can even put like a minus value and get the shape that you actually want I'm going to keep it at zero because I'm quite happy with that shape um, now obviously we can go back to the very beginning and for example we've designed this cone so you can select the shape now and decide how much of this cone you actually want maybe you want just a, that kind of flash so I think that's very useful and obviously something that is quick to do you can go to this uh, circular splatter now if you want to change the the look of it and play with the for example symmetry random and I think those kind of shell looks pretty cool and um, we also did this muzzle flash so I'm just gonna plug this in and see what kind of results I'm gonna get So obviously that's not ideal, but maybe I can move this star shape here. Now it still doesn't look good. Okay, so we got this. We're modifying it here. I think we could, for example, just modify it. Uh, this a little bit better. tweak some settings I mean yeah this could be a muzzle flash as well uh, but let's maybe go back to our original one this one and to be fair I'm quite happy with that shape so what I'm gonna do now I'm just gonna copy that texture and put it into my material I'm gonna show you how it looks actually in the Unreal Engine Okay, so I have imported this uh, exact texture that we just done to the engine. We've got it here and I've replaced uh, my previous materials in that system uh, with that texture. Okay, so I think it looks pretty cool in comparison with the other ones and uh, yeah, that was it to be honest. Quite happy with this uh, muzzle flash. It's got really nice directionality and uh, I really like those uh, spikes uh, on that texture. Mm, okay, so that was part two. And in the next part, we're just gonna go a little bit over the top and we're just gonna create um, this texture, which I think it's uh, very stylized and uh, I think getting really nice shapes will be our uh, priority. Okay, and I think it's a, a little bit longer video. It might be a little bit longer video, so I might split it into two parts. So it'll be three and four, but hopefully, um, yeah, maybe I'll manage to fit it into the one part. But anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this one. There, and I hope, uh, yeah, you're gonna create your own muzzle flashes using those techniques. Thanks for watching.